guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about the new Intel 4th generation of core processors, the Haswell chips. Now on paper they do look fairly similar. It's still a quad core processor and the actual specs are very similar as the clock speed for instance is the same as both Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge chips. But the first major difference between these and the Sandy and Ivy Bridge chips is that it uses a new socket and that means you're going to need a new motherboard. The socket number is 1150 and the board you're going to be after is a Z87 board. Now these chips are marketed as really really power efficient. So not only should they be the most powerful consumer chips available, but they're also really power efficient, which is going to be a big deal on laptops. But of course it doesn't matter quite so much on desktops, but we are going to be after more power efficient chips as when you think all the computers in the world, if they all used a lot less power then worldwide that is a lot less power to use and it's going to cost you less on your bill at the end of the day as well. However, there is one minor drawback with this power efficiency, and that's that your power supply might not be able to cope with providing such a low amount of power. This means that you're going to have to check with your current power supply. If you've got a fairly new one, then it's probably not going to be a problem. But if you have an older power supply, then it might not be able to provide such a low amount of power. Just simply go onto your manufacturer's website, look up the model number, and it should tell you whether it is Haswell compatible. If it's not, it's not the end of the world, it just means that you won't be able to get the most power efficiency states out of these processors. But it's not only power efficiency that's new. You also get six SATA ports that can provide a six gigabit per second speed, whereas the older processors only supported two. This means that if you're gonna have more than two SSDs, you're gonna be able to run them at their full speed without having to revert to SATA 2 sort of speeds. You also get six native USB 3 ports, and if you're not using a graphics card, then these motherboards will now be able to output 4K resolution via the included DisplayPort 1.2. That may not be so useful now. If you're building a really powerful editing machine, then a GPU isn't necessarily a priority. You're not necessarily going to need it. So looking ahead, if you aren't gonna be using a GPU, then that 4K resolution support could be very useful for you. Now when it comes to RAM, this motherboard and processor combo will be able to overclock RAM even better than before. Of course you're going to need compatible RAM, but as RAM gets faster, you're going to need a motherboard and processor that will support it. And these new processors and these new motherboards will do exactly that. Now the guys over at Hexus tested the latest i7 processor, the i7-477K. Now they tested various things. Let's start with the Cinebench test, which you should be able to see right here-ish. As you can see, it's got a higher score, which is better, which means that if you're going to be doing stuff like editing, it's going to take you less time. The processor is going to be able to do it more quickly. But if you're a PC gamer, then this is going to be of more use to you. The integrated graphics even perform better. But on this sort of high-end chip, no one really is going to be using the onboard graphics anyway. But if you're going to be doing stuff like editing, you can use the GPU inside to tackle these sorts of tasks. And so it is going to perform even better but the extra FPS you're going to get in games aren't going to be that useful because if you're buying a high-end processor then you're going to pair it with a graphics card even if it's not high-end. Which leads us on to the GPU performance. The GPU performance was tested in both Dirt Showdown and in Bioshock Infinite. The Dirt Showdown test did indeed give a few extra FPS whereas the Bioshock Infinite didn't really give any extra FPS at all. This kind of means that it doesn't have that much of an impact, and if it does, it's going to be very small. Now this tiny FPS increase isn't actually that valuable. It's going to be nice if you can get it, but it's certainly not worth upgrading your processor for. So if you're on a Sandy Bridge processor or an Ivy Bridge processor, I really wouldn't worry about upgrading because from a gaming point of view, there pretty much isn't anything to gain at all. Where the chips did come into their own, however, is on the power efficiency. The tests that Hexus did showed clearly that these use a lot less power in both their idle state as well as when they're actually under load. So to summarise, for a gamer, it's probably not worth upgrading. If you are into heavy editing, then it's probably not worth an upgrade, but if you do upgrade, you are going to see significant gain. So if you were looking to upgrade, is it worth the price of a new motherboard and a new processor? Probably and nearly absolutely not. But if you are looking to either upgrade a really old rig or buy a new rig, then these Haswell chips are definitely the way to go. All we have to do now is see what AMD come up with and see how well they compare. The last thing to add is that if you do decide to buy one of these processors, if you buy the retail kit, you get a free copy of Grid 2, which I'm very much enjoying and playing a lot, but it's again not a reason to upgrade. You could just 
by Grid2. I'll be bringing a new PC-centric rig very soon, and this will be a rig that if I went out tomorrow and bought a new computer for me, it's the one I would buy. It's going to be about getting the best value rig, as well as some luxuries in there, because I would use it a lot, and I will use it a lot, and I'll do editing on it as well. But I'll bring you that very soon. There's a lot of good videos coming up soon, got a lot of stuff up my sleeve, so if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe. But if you are, thank you, and keep it with PC-centric. Thank you very much guys for watching this video and I will hopefully see you next time.